a lovely day with lovely water. It is a new day. But in spite of the evils of this present world, God is faithful. You know, David said in Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mind. May God bless each of you in Jesus' name. And you guys, come on. Spend a little time with me in the Word of God, where we will see examples of God's love, see examples of His peace, see examples of His goodness, see examples of God's faithfulness. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. May God bless you again. In Jesus' name. Come on. Hello, good morning. How's everyone this morning? I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. I know everyone's probably getting out and those who others have already made their way out to school and, and to work. Uh, we're starting uh, a new season, a new season as we are in many of our lives. This is Lovely Waters. Welcome to It's a Lovely Day. And by the same token, it is a new day. I also want to just uh, give God the glory for this morning. Uh, God has truly been blessing me this week. God has been so, so, so faithful and mindful. And I just want to give God the glory. I just want to give that testimony about how God's been answering prayer and how God, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, when we have faith, you know, then that means that faith is the substance of things that are hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. So sometimes we have to just confess the blessings of God, even when we can't see them. All right, then. I'd like to begin with our opening scripture today. Our opening scripture today is coming from Psalms uh, 46, 10, and verse 11. And it begins like this. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our ref refuge. Selah. Amen. Sometimes God sends that to us to quicken us, to remind us, amen, that I'm here. I'm present. I'm ever present. I have everything under control. But truly, sometimes we jump around and we get upset and we get nervous and we get insecure about many of the woes and blows of life. But God comes to us in Psalms 46 often times and he say, be still. Be still and know this, that I am God. Amen. Nothing you can do. You just be still and lean and depend on me, that I am present. And that not only that, that I am your very present help in your time of need. Let us go before the throne of grace, that we may seek him for mercy in our times of need. Father, today, O oh God, we lift up our eyes to you, O oh God. Father, we thank you for this beautiful morning, O oh God. Father, a, a morning that, Lord God, that we, O oh God, did not know, O oh God, that we would even see. But nevertheless, by faith, we laid our heads down this morning, last night. And Lord, we thank you for all that you had done and all that you had been. Lord, thank you for being with us and walking with us and talking with us and taking care of our business. Oh God, we thank you for taking care of business that we could not take care of ourselves. Oh God, we bless you. 
We give you glory and honor, oh God, because you are, you are oh so very worthy. Oh Father, this morning, oh God, we, Lord, yet, Lord, look up to you, Lord, worshiping you, Lord, in all of your goodness, in all of your mercy, oh God. We bless you. Lord, we worship you because you are God. Lord, we thank you for taking care of our children. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for, Lord, being faithful to your promises. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for sending us peace and, Lord, comfort, Lord, in times, Lord, that are so uncertain. Oh, God, we bless you and we thank you for without you, oh, God, we are nothing. Father, we thank you today and we pray that your word, Father, Lord, we'll go out across, oh God, uh, the land. We pray that your word will touch hearts and minds and that their hearts will be quickened. Their ways will be made. Lord Jesus, and that, Lord, their spirits will be comforted. And that as they begin this day, that, Lord God, that they will give you glory. They will honor you, oh God. And, Lord Jesus, they will continue to look up Oh God, by faith, in Jesus' name, bless each and every one of those who happen to, Lord, bump into this channel. Father, we ask you, oh God, to let them know, oh God, hallelujah, that Lord Jesus, you are faithful. Oh God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your faithfulness today. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In your precious name, we pray. Amen. Praise and we praise him and we thank him for all, all things. Amen. Even the little bitty things that we don't even take note of. We thank you, Lord Jesus. And we thank you for bringing us a mighty long way. Father, we thank you for being so faithful. Lord Jesus, when people we hoped or thought would be there, when they were absent. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Oh, God, for being there today in Jesus' name. All right. So I'd like to uh, also um, just, uh, just begin to suggest that as we begin to pray, as we think about God's faithfulness, as we think about our faith faithfulness back to him, because we, we've got a lot to share about how faithful, God being to us, but we need to also look at how we need to improve in areas of becoming more faithful to him. Amen. Oh God, bless us today. Lord, send your word, Lord Jesus. Send your word, oh God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, I'd like to draw our attention to the ways and the deeds and the character of God. I'm going to be doing some reading today, amen, and I hope that uh, if you would like, you will follow me with, with, in with me on, on the scriptures, with the scriptures, excuse me. I also want to say that each part of our series has been based on us coming unto the understanding of who God is through his son and how much we truly need him. And that there is no other love greater than the love of God. Today, I will share a couple of examples of how God has shown his people. He's shown you and he's shown me of how faithful he has been to us in past times in our life and how he's even faithful to us right now. But before that, I'd like to compel each of you to think back on his faithfulness. Just think of situations and circumstances. Try to recount times when you were discounted. You were discounted by others and you even counted your own selves out. But at the ninth hour, God came through for you. And he proved himself faithful. It appears that the longer we suffer and struggle, sometimes the longer we have uh, in a situation or a situation, 
seems like the longer that we struggle through and we labor through, it seems like the enemy begins to start uh, working against us and against our faith. And so we, are, we begin to uh, oftentimes doubt God's word of promise to us. And we become weary and sometimes torn. We find that in Genesis 12, 1 through 9, and how God called Abraham. And when he called Abraham, Abraham was 75 years old. And he made a promise to him that he would bless him with a son. Amen. Well, he made him a promise. Amen. We use that word a lot, you know, and we know that oftentimes when man use promise, you know, they break promises. But Jesus Christ is our promise keeper. He came, he bled, he died on the cross. And he fulfilled his promise to his father and he fulfilled that same promise to us. Amen. He went through all the suffering. He went through all the pain. He went through all the rejection. He went through all of the shed blood and then still turned around and put his victory in our hand. So I also want to say here that Jesus is our promise keeper. Amen. God fulfilled his promise that he made to Abraham. He made it to Abraham as well as Sarah, even though she laughed. So we see here that that is one of the first examples that I want to use when it comes to God's faithfulness. And I also want to say that God came through with that promise to Abraham. And at the time of Isaac's birth, Abraham was 100 years old. Amen. But nevertheless, God kept his promise. The timing was, I'm, very, I'm sure, very tedious because even Sarah and Abraham, Abram made a mistake by calling his maidservant in, God still kept his promises. Amen. So we think about the faithfulness of God. Wake up, O oh ye sleeper, to God's faithfulness. Amen. To his word and to each of us daily. If God makes a promise, as we find here, as through our example, he will fulfill it. I also want us to go to Hebrews 10. Amen. Hebrews 10 and verse 23. It tells us that let us hold fast the profession of our faith, faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. So God reminds us today, don't let go of your faith. We struggle, and I mean sometimes it is, it, I tell you that it's, it, it is, it's a fight. It's a battle. Amen. But nevertheless, God reminds us today that God is, is faithful. And he told me to remind you to wake up and realize whatever that is you're struggling with in your life, whatever that is you've been waiting on, it seemed like for eons. If God gave you that promise, trust and believe that God is faithful. Amen. He is faithful to his promises. All right. Now, I have uh, a, an, another example. As I started, I wanted to say 
that we should wake up to the faithfulness of God. And I gave you one example. We got a million of them. But now I'd like to give you an example of us striving, making a commitment to be faithful to God. Amen. And that's something that we have to be mindful of every day. Because one thing for sure, each of us know what God told us to do. And when we know what God told us to do, it is our, God. It's a, it becomes a mandate. And it is our Christian obligation and duty. And it's a joy, an honor, praise the Lord, to be asked of God or commanded by God to do a work or a mission for him. So let us go to another example. I'm going to be giving a little reading here. Amen. And uh, the next one is coming from Daniel. It is Daniel 6. And we're going to be reading from Daniel 6. And we're going to start with Daniel 4, 4 uh, verse 4. All right. Come with me if you'd like. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they couldn't find any occasion to do that. They looked for everything they could, could to try to bring some type of fault, find a fault in, in Daniel, and they couldn't. It was just a perfect uh, situation where God got a chance to shine through his son, Daniel, but they kept on. They wanted to find error. They wanted to find fault. And so these men came together and they said, we shall not find any occasion against Daniel in verse five, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom and governors and the princes and the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute. Now, remember, all of this was to try to find fault or to destroy one of God's people, one of God's chosen people. And he, they, they began to talk to the king about bringing forth a new decree that all of the people in the province would uh, not bow or worship any any other statue or any other god except for the king for 30 days and see the king wasn't aware of what they were doing either but nevertheless the king agreed and so uh they said that now O king verse i'm at verse eight now established a decree to sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which alter it not. Wherefore, King Darius, he signed the decree and he put it in writing. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house in spite of. And these uh, calculating enemies were standing outside and they heard Daniel bow and pray to God. And he kneeled on his knees each day, three times a day to seek and worship God. And so we have here in verse 11, these same men assembled and found David, uh, Daniel, excuse me, praying and making supplication before his God, before his God. Amen. Then they came near and they ran back to the king. They came near to the king and they began to remind him of the decree. And they began to uh, tell their story. He said, hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any God or man within 30 days, save except for thee, O king, should be cast into the den of lions? And the king answered and said, this thing is true. They said, well, let me tell you something. Everybody's not adhering to that. 
They said that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, he regarded not the king, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but he maketh his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, he was sore. He was displeased with himself. He set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. He had repented that he had made the decree or signed in the decree to law in the first place. Praise God. He had favor with the king. So what he did was he began to just really get nervous and upset and tried to figure out a way he could stop this thing from happening. So these men assembled around the king and said to the king, now, okay, now listen, remember that the law of the Medes and the Persians say that this decree or statute, which you have established, can be changed. And the king commanded that they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said to Daniel, thou God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And we see here that Daniel refused to bow down to the decree. Instead, he chose to bow down to God. And nevertheless, the king even himself trusted in the, the God of Daniel. And as we know, the story goes that God, he sent an angel that was amongst the lions and he shut them, their mouths. And God was also with the king because the king couldn't even sleep that night. So he woke, he, he, he ran down there first thing that morning and he cried out to Daniel. And Daniel said, yes, God has delivered me. I'm still here. <laughs> he was truly, 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 truly blessed because he had favor with God and man. So we see here that, uh, the king was exceedingly glad in 23 and commanded that he they should take Daniel up out of that den. He said, okay, I want you to get him out of there right now. And he also made another decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men will tremble in fear before the God of Daniel forever, for he is the living God. So this is a beautiful thing here, is that we see a second example. We talk about, awake all ye sleeper to the faithfulness of our God, to the faithfulness of our Father. Amen. And also we see the faithfulness of one of God's chosen to his God and his Father. Amen. God wants us to learn from both of these examples, that we first must not always expect God to be faithful to us first and foremost, but that we too have a responsibility to love God. And how we love him is by being faithful, even in the smallest of areas in our lives. So uh, we've come to uh, the end of another video. I'll see you soon in the next video. In the meantime, remember, in these last evil days, God has not changed. He said, I'm God and I change not. And he wants us to remember, amen, that we should wake up, amen, to his word. And in this last video, awake, O ye sleepers, to God's faithfulness to us and our faithfulness to him. This is Lovely Waters. I want you all to, if you have a chance, go back and read it. God is faithful. Have a blessed rest of the day. Bye-bye.
Hello again. This is the universe. And I hope that you all God said, and I also want you to know that at the end of each video, I want to compel you to think about the word that has just been given and know that Jesus truly is the answer for every problem, every problem, every situation, every uh, trial that you might be going through, that Jesus cares and that he's you to experience new life. So I want to meet you to Christ. And I'd like to begin with an invitation to selfish. No matter where you are, how low, how discouraged, how depressed, how oppressed, how it may, you may be at your wit's end, how you may not even want to live much longer. God can deliver. So I want to begin with Romans 10, 9, and 10. That if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt. Number 624 and 